Welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. And now, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Genesis. Tonight is study number 31 in Genesis chapter 35. And we'll be reading from verse 27. And Jacob came unto Isaac his father unto Mamre, unto the city of Arba, which is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac sojourned. And the days of Isaac were a hundred and fourscore years. And Isaac gave up the ghost and died and was gathered unto his people being old and full of days, and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. And uh, that brings us to the end of the chapter. Now, I mentioned last time that there's a, a space of years um, between the time that Jacob comes to Isaac, his father, unto Mamre, and the time that Isaac actually dies, as we're giving his, his death age of 180 and that would be the year 1887 B.C. But again, uh, this is the year 1906 in all likelihood B.C., which is some 19 years until 1887 and the time when Isaac dies. Well, uh, we won't get back into that again. Just to mention that... Now, uh, now, now, God is making a point of letting us know that Isaac dies at, at this time when he's 180. And uh, also he tells us that he gave up the ghost and died and was gathered unto his people, being old and full of days. And his sons, Esau and Jacob, buried him. Well, and Esau and Jacob, uh, at the time when Isaac will die at 180 will each be 120 years old themselves because they're twins and they were born when Isaac was 60. So that would be a significant number, uh, significant age for them as 120. Uh, we've seen already uh, in, in the Bible with um, the number of years that God gave Noah to build the flood and, and, um, a little later on, it'll be the age when Moses dies. So it, it, it's a very significant number. Okay, let's look at especially verse 29. Isaac gave up the ghost and died and was gathered unto his people. The word gathered is Strong's number 622. And it's a word that's used in association with harvest, um, if we go to Exodus 23, and we'll read in verse 16, it says, In the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Also in Leviticus 23, we read in verse 39, also on the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto Jehovah seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. So the gathering in of the fruit, and, um, and we, we won't go to all the scriptures, but it can easily be shown that the Bible the word of God likens the harvest of fruit to the salvation of souls. God send, sends the rain, which identifies with his word in proper time and season. And he, he sent two rains in the New Testament era, the early rain uh, that produced the harvest of the first fruits during the church age and the latter rain that produced the final harvest at the end of the year, um, at the time of ingathering, 
and the, the two rains identify with the two outpourings of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we also see this word, um, this Hebrew word translated as gathered, used in a verse that does point to the latter rain and the second outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And that's in Isaiah chapter 11. Um, and I'll start reading in verse 11. And shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble. And that's our word that's translated gather in the other places. Um, and shall gather or assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth, bringing in the fruit, bringing in the elect of God into the kingdom of God is what this word is pointing to. And that's what happens in the life of Isaac. He was a true elect child of God. And he was gathered unto his people. God collected him and brought him into the kingdom of heaven. Um, and historically, we know it's the Old Testament side of the cross. And, and uh, although God speaks of the entire Old Testament period as the, as the early righteous reign, which would eventually produce the crop or harvest of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, um, it, still, there were saints on the Old Testament side of the cross that were brought into the kingdom of God. And, and God um, uses this same word, gathered. Now, as far as the ungodly or the unsaved, the Bible does use this same word, gathered, in the sense they may gather together in opposition and come against God but not in relationship to their death. When the wicked die or come under judgment and perish, the Bible tells us they are not gathered. For example, if we go to Jeremiah chapter 8, Jeremiah 8, well, I'll start in verse 1. At that time, saith Jehovah, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah, and the bones of his princes, and the bones of the priests, and the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, out of their graves. They shall spread them before the sun, and the moon, and all the host of heaven, whom they have loved, and whom they have served, and after whom they have walked, and whom they have sought, and whom they have worshipped. They shall not be gathered, nor be buried, they shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. This is describing the judgment of God and telling us that these men of Israel, um, and, and again, very prominent men, will not be gathered. And the spiritual teaching would apply to the leaders in the churches and congregations who were not true men, not truly born again. Neither will they be gathered. They will not be collected by God. They will not be brought up into the kingdom of heaven. They are dead. They have ceased to exist. And that's the end of them. Um, we, we also read in the next chapter, Jeremiah 9, verse 21, For death has come up into our windows and has entered into our palaces to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. Speak, thus saith Jehovah, even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field, and as the handful after the harvestmen, and none shall gather them. Yes, this is primarily these verses in Jeremiah 8 and Jeremiah 9 are referring to the ungodly within the churches and congregations, as God brought judgment on the house of God. But still... Um, there's 
the same language used of the ungodly of the nations. If we go to Jeremiah 25, Jeremiah chapter 25, and in verse 33, you, you can read earlier from verse 29 down, and you'll see it, it's speaking of the final judgment of the world. And then in, um, well, I'll start in verse 32 of Jeremiah 25. Thus saith Jehovah of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth, and the slain of Jehovah shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. They will not be gathered. They are not part of the final fruits. They're not those that God saved out of the world. Re remember the husbandman, uh, eternal God, waited for the precious fruit of the earth until he had received the early and latter rain. And the rain identifies with his doctrine that drops as the dew, and it fell upon the nations of the world outside of the churches and congregations during the second part of the great tribulation and there god saved the great multitude but even saving a great multitude it may number 170 million 180 million um, we don't know exactly but that left billions of people unsaved and they are not gathered as, and over the course of this time, we can also understand the sending forth of the truth of God's word in judgment day in order to feed the sheep will also serve to gather them. They will respond to the word and be brought in. They're already fruit. The Lord already saved them. It's just a matter of collecting them and, and they will uh, be gathered unto God against that last day but not the rest of the world not the billions of people they will not be gathered now uh, what this ultimately means we can see in job chapter 27 job 27 and in verse 19 it says the rich man shall lie down but he shall not be gathered he openeth his eyes and he is no, he is not. And, and that would relate to many verses. Um, the wicked will be no more. He will cease to exist. Finally, on that last day, he will be destroyed, annihilated out of existence. That's the final judgment of the wicked. And, and the wicked are those that never became saved, that are in their sin. Uh, that's the judgment of God. Just one last thing. Uh, when we read here in Genesis 35, in verse 29, Isaac gave up the ghost and died and was gathered unto his people, being old and full of days. Well, we, we see this expression, old and full of days, in, in a few instances concerning very faithful men. The word full that's used here is only found eight times in the Old Testament. And it's used of Abraham in Genesis 25. Go back to Genesis 25 in verse 8. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And it's used of Isaac, of course. And it was used of David. If we go to 1 Chronicles 29, starting in, let's see, 1 Chronicles 29. Well, I'll just read verse 28. And he died in a good old age, full of days, riches and honor, and Solomon's son reigned in his stead. And we know David was 70 years old when he died. Um, uh, Abraham was 175 and Isaac was 180. So the, the full of days statement does not really concern 
the age itself. The, um, there's a big difference between 180, 175, and 70. And it, it's also used of Job in Job 42. Uh, it's used of Job himself when he dies at the, the end of the book of Job. Uh, in verses 16 and 17 of Job 42. After this lived Job 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons even four generations. So Job died being old. Well, we don't know his exact age because it says after this, after that experience, he lived another 140 years. But the same statement is made of him. He died old and full of days. So that's four times it's used of very faithful men, true elect children of God, out of the eight. Um, I, I think there's one verse that really kind of sums up what this means. If we go to Proverbs 19, and this is also the same word translated as full. In Proverbs 19, in verse 23, it says, The fear of Jehovah tendeth to life. And he that hath it shall abide satisfied. That's our word that's translated full. He shall not be visited with evil. See, the fear of Jehovah tends to life. That is, those who have the fear of Jehovah have life. They've been born again. And he that hath it, this fear of Jehovah that comes with being born again, and receiving the gift of eternal life, shall abide satisfied. There will be this fullness, this sense of a life well lived. Uh, to uh, summarize and, and close up the statement for these men concerning their lives in this world, it really is worded in such a way that, that they lived a full life. You, you ever hear people say that? Isaac gave up the ghost and died and was gathered unto his people, being old and full of days. He lived a full life. Well, people of the world say that if somebody happened to um, party hard or, or if someone was very wealthy and maybe uh, had a nice big house and, and, or climbed the ladder of success, and, and was, um, uh, you know, executive of some kind. Or maybe he, uh, he or she had a beautiful spouse and, and a beautiful family. Uh, and they like to travel. That's how the world views being full of days or living a full life. But of course, you know, the truth is, as, and God knows the truth. He is the truth and his word is true and faithful. God views all that, if that's all there is, as vanity. Solomon summed it up, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. All the pursuits of, of wealth and riches that the world uh, lusts after and spends their time in ultimately are empty and vain and worthless at the end. It's all gone. It, it's gone from them. It's like it never happened. It, it never was. But not so with God's elect. Our lives have purpose and meaning. And they are lived to the full. Lived to the full. Even if it, um, it's true we were sinful and wasted all of our life until the very end like the thief on the cross. Yet in that moment of salvation and in that um, instant of testimony to the Lord, the thief's life was made full. Be, and, and there's satisfaction. There's, there's that sense of completeness. We have done what the Lord had us on earth to do. And now we, we go and our life is not over. It, it just begins as we enter into the new heaven and new earth and look towards that eternal future, glorious eternal future that awaits. Thank you for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. 
For more studies and information, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. Until our next Bible study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.